Hello and welcome to yet another Sigma Life Hangout. Today we're discussing with two fellow journalists from the Turkish Cypriot community on the topic of the elections held yesterday there. Hello, I'm here with uh, Yurta Kul Jaffer and Esra Aigen. Yes. I really hope I'm <laughs> pronouncing this right. It's you not are. my best <laughs> thing pronouncing foreign names, but today we're here for a very specific cause. You were two journalists that covered the whole process of the election. Mm -hmm. And today that is done. This is the first day with the newly elected leader of the Turkish Cypriot community, yes. Mustafa Kinji. He is considered to be a moderate leftist and he actually swept a win from Erovlu because he got like 60.5% over almost 40%, it was 39.5% if I'm yeah. not mistaken. How would you comment on that, the way he swept away the win? Mm -hmm. Um, Please. Ladies okay. first. <laughs> uh, it, indeed, it was. It was. He did win with a sweeping majority. I think um, uh, none of us were expecting that big, big of a, a, a difference in the in the po in the ballots votes. Um, it shows that the Turkish Cypriots are determined in. Um, in uh, bringing about a change they they voted for change clearly they voted for um a, a solution a united cyprus because these are all the things that mr akunje promised during his election campaign um i think this is a very big message it's a very strong message actually i would like to i, I can liken it to a referendum mm -hmm. um not an election it was a referendum um in my opinion uh, f and the Turkish Cypriots gave a very strong message to their um, Greek Cypriot counterparts. I actually read in the press yesterday that it was the um, anniversary of the actual referendum about the Cypriot problem and the election and uh, Akinji's win was the second referendum yeah. stating that the Turkish Cypriots do want a solution of the problem and do want a un reunification of the island. Actually, I posted that last night on my Facebook profile. Um, I said it, it was 11 years almost to the date mm -hmm. when Turkish Cypriots filled, they went to the ballots and they voted in favor of the, the Annan plan, mm -hmm. the UN-sponsored Annan plan. And it's 12 years almost to the day that the crossing points first opened. Mm -hmm. Now, when we look back over the last uh, 11 to 12 years, um, unfortunately, in terms of solving the Cyprus problem, we haven't accomplished enough. Um, yes, we do have a lot of crossing points. Yes, uh, Cypriots from both sides cross over on a daily basis. Maybe Turkish Cypriots more than Greek Cypriots do uh, for a number of reasons, uh, some for work, some for uh, pleasure, others for, for shopping or business. Uh, but as Esra has clearly stated, this was a vote about those who wanted change and those who wanted things to remain as they are. And um, fortunately, those who want to change uh, overwhelmingly uh, won the majority of the vote. One thing for sure, and that is the political system in the North now will undergo a radical transformation. The political parties, the mainstream political parties, uh, have lost a, a lot of popularity. We saw this uh, almost a year ago when um, they uh, introduced all the parties in the Turkish Cypriot parliament, they presented uh, a package of constitutional amendments. And these amendments, despite being uh, endorsed and supported by all the parties, were rejected by a majority of the people. Mm -hmm. And in yesterday's elections, what we saw was that the main political parties, the nationalist UBP party or the Democrat party, and even in the first round, the Republican Turkish party, has lost its traditional popularity mm -hmm. within the Turkish Cypriot community. And this shows that Turkish Cypriots have reached a level of maturity in terms of change. Uh, now they have ac become accustomed to changing their political leaders when they're not happy with what, what they're seeing. Um, are we closer to a solution today? I would like to believe so. I think we are closer to a solution in the sense that we have someone who will sincerely work for a settlement. Mm -hmm. I repeat, and I told you this in the previous program, does Akinji have a magic wand? Are we going to be solving the Cyprus problem overnight? Is everything going to be cherry blossomed? No, we have to be very realistic. 
And we were talking with that with Esther on the way. I think the main purpose why we're here today is to give out an important message to our fellow Greek Cypriots, our Greek Cypriot brothers and sisters, our compatriots. Uh, we share this island. And Turkish Cypriots, this is the second time we have been demonstrating our willingness for a solution. Mm -hmm. um, are we perfect in every way? No, we are not. Nobody is. But if we really need to make this work, I think we really need to put a sincere effort in, in doing that. And, and we need Greek Cypriots to work with us. We've been talking a lot about change and how we invest in change and how you obviously invested so much in change by voting at QNG, but wanting something and gaining something, achieving something, there are two different separate things. Mm -hmm. How feasible is it for Akinji to achieve everything he promised? How, how feasible is it for him to actually implement a change? How feasible is it to get the Greek Cypriot side on the same wagon? Because change, we both speak of change, but by change we may mean different things. How feasible is this change everyone is so invested in? Well, I mean, it is, it is obviously and clearly a change. Um, Turkish Cypriots for the second time have really shaken the status quo. They have challenged the st st status quo. They have overthrown a um, powerful nationalist leader. Um, so, of course, the first time we made change, it didn't work mm -hmm. because certain things went wrong. We can sit here and talk until morning what went wrong. But the important thing is here is that we have achieved this for the second time. We have given out a very clear and very strong message. Um, and I think that now it is um, there is a very big duty of the Greek Cypriot media, Greek Cypriot decision makers, opinion leaders to get this message and mobilize their audience, their uh, people towards um, change. Because we do need you guys to move to, to be able to get somewhere. It's not going to you happen. You both work with Greek Cypriot journalists and Greek Cypriot decision makers as journalists. What is the notion, what is the sentiment that you get from people that you talk to in the Greek Cypriot side? Well, I think uh, and Esther touched upon it. I think the media, to start off with, is very important in, in terms of, con of getting the message across. Um, it's, it's, of course, it's natural. People go to school, people read newspapers, people watch television, uh, people talk about it in the, in the local coffee shops uh, or when they're having tea with their friends or, or at dinner or whatever. As you know, as, as Cypriots, uh, the Cyprus problem is our most favorite pastime. But uh, it's important when portraying the message, when conveying the message, to, to let people understand that, you know, some things will change and it's all right to change. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have been so, we have we've become so reluctant to change over the years, so entrenched in our own views and positions. So truth is part of it. Reconciliation is part of it. Um, First-hand contact is part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, You'll f be surprised, a lot of people don't really have true contact with people from the other community. Yes, people grow over and they sit in a cafe and they eat maybe or they, they visit but some they place. But they do not actually But they do not actually truly socially interact. Mm -hmm. It will be easier in the future when children study uh, or, 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 you know, when, when, when maybe both communities, in the case of a solution, they can learn languages or the education system will change. What is harder or what is more difficult is for people in our generation. You know, people who, have, who are uh, at a state in their lives where they are setting up families or they've reached a position in, in their work or in their, in, their li in their family lives. It is these people that will take the first pioneering steps towards change. And, and this they need is to feel the responsibility of that. Yes, and, and, and the way to do this is to talk about it, to, to have active yeah. dialogue. Not, uh, not to be scared of discussing. To, to read and to question. And of course, when doing that, when doing this in a very, you know, uh, mature fashion without accusing each other. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I'm saying it's not going to be easy. I mean, I think, you know, Turkish Cypriots will have to understand that some things 
will change, that they will have to come to accept some things. Greek Cypriots the same way. Maybe some Greek Cypriots will have to accept the fact that, I'm, I'm just giving an example, that they may not be able to, to go back to, to their homes, or they, you know, they will be forced to move, or, or something else, or they will have to make a concession regarding voting. But if you really want to make a, a, um, a future for ourselves, a common, a common, common future, future for ourselves, this change will have to take place. Uh, because I think both communities have come to a point where they, where they see and where they understand that it is no longer feasible or sustainable or even more importantly, rational or logical to continue living like this. Um, you know, I mean, you can understand the irrationality of the situation when you talk to children who have difficulty comprehending mm -hmm. how they show uh, their passports or their IDs when they have to cross from one end of the street to the other end of the street. Especially when they're doing it by foot, walking exactly. on the street, and exactly. then they stop listening or why, to one language. Or, or why they starts. do not understand children the same age as they are uh, speaking in a different language. Uh, and it is very difficult to, uh, to explain these kind of notions to people. So I think we need to talk and we need to have dialogue. Mm -hmm. And when I mean talk, not talk within our own communities. Talk Talking between the two communities. Mm -hmm. um, just to really summarize it, um, you asked the question whether Akinji will succeed. It will depend on a number of factors. It will also depend on what the Greek Cypriot leader has to offer at the table, his approach and his attitude. Uh, it will depend on Turkey's attitude. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just listening, I was just writing about uh, Erdogan congratulating Akinji before I came here. Yeah. And, and, you know, the Tur uh, he said that Ankara will continue to prioritize a solution to the Cyprus problem. Yet he also made it clear that it would be unacceptable to have a solution at all costs. There's uh, so many problems with this sentence. Continuing having prioritizing the, the Cypriot Cyprus problem. Issue. How was it a priority for so many years for him, where he essentially pushed for the status quo to remain? And how would he say that he would support Akinji or whoever the Turkish Cypriot leader might that be when he starts off saying he disagrees, mm -hmm. essentially, with what he stands for? And then... I want to go back to last night, Anastasiadis, Nikos Anastasiadis had tweeted that he's ready to meet and greet and talk to Mr. Akinji, right. but he also gave out the, um, the message that Ankara needs to stand back and let the two communities figure it out themselves and if there's a part of the problem that they need to identify and take care of, take care of they should do it themselves. But then Erdogan, while saying that he respects her, every single word of both of what both leaders said he stands L um, just i'm going to really make this point before i forget it just uh, just for our viewers to understand the the approach the mentality of the turkish government of turkey um, a lot of turks turks in in cyprus don't really know much about it uh, sorry a lot of uh, people in turkey don't really know much about Cyprus, or actually about the realities and the p political situation of Cyprus. What I'm talking about, the, the average Joe on the street, the mm -hmm. average person. Uh, they know where Cyprus is. Some of them even don't know where Cyprus is. Uh, some of them even don't know what the Turkish Cypriot flag looks like. Uh, some of them you don't, may not know what language we speak, and some of them think that we speak Greek. You'd be surprised how little a lot of people in Turkey know about uh, the Cyprus problem. Every time you go to Istanbul or a big city and you're in a taxi cab, it turns out that all of the taxi cab drivers, uh, drivers in Turkey have done their military service in Cyprus, which is not possible. But this is, the, the way Cyprus is viewed in Turkey is, it's, it's about the, the Cyprus, the military intervention. Mm -hmm. This is the starting point and how they associate uh, Cyprus with it. But when it comes to the realities of the island, people don't really know much about what's going on and they don't really, to be honest, care about what's going on. For Ankara, it's a different situation because it's, for, for the government, it's a different situation. It's something which is used as part of, uh, uh, it's, it's a policy, it's a national policy. And with that, we've come to the end of part one of our conversation. Please make sure to watch part two.